So, Kelly, first I have to ask you, if you were to watch a movie on Atari 2600, what's the first movie you would want to watch on there? The first movie I watch on any new media, Army of Darkness. Because it's, it's the greatest movie of all time. That's a good choice. That's a, is that your favorite movie? Yes, 100%. Excellent. But you're not a fan of the, the broader Evil Dead franchise, correct? Um, I like them. I like the I like the other parts of the Evil Dead franchise, but uh, there was such a wonderful infusion of stupid in Army of Darkness and in, in humor, uh, and it was kind of Bruce Campbell at his hammiest that um, uh, I just uh, I just really enjoyed it. But yeah, no, I, I like all the Evil Dead stuff. I haven't really gotten into the the remakes yet or the kind of sequel sort of whatever's whatever's kind of happened after army of darkness uh but uh and i liked ash vs evil dead uh on stars that was good but uh no it's army of darkness city you know it's got three lot it's heavier on the three stooges references um you got the skeleton army uh it's all good how about you now uh, man that's tough i would i would have to be self-serving and do like evil bomb <laughs> and see that in the the glorious you know giving imax a run for its money atari 2600 video what i thought was cool when i saw this is i thought like it was a clickbaity title for the video like it wasn't going to be an actual or it was going to be like a way to you know run a video through an atari 2600 like i didn't think it was going to be an actual video playing off a real atari 2600 cartridge that's one of those things that you know like we recently spoke about the Avengers of Bayou Billy, where you're just seeing it do something it shouldn't be able to do. And not that it compares to, you know, this is not going to compare to consoles that came after and uh, certainly not CD-ROM consoles or anything now in terms of quality. But the fact that you're seeing an Atari 2600 play video is insane. Yeah. You're yeah. more of a 2600 guy than me. What did you think, Sam? Did you know you could do something like this? No, I um, I didn't, and I was very skeptical. I thought, how is that even possible? <laughs> I just I couldn't imagine. Um, but uh, it it all kind of came because you know it's the limitations of the the video capabilities of the twenty six hundred was from a res resolution perspective and all that. I was like, how is this, how is this going to work? Uh, and so I was amazed uh, to see it. Now, uh, it, it is not IMAX level quality <laughs> in terms of what you see, but you are actually, you know, it's to, we did a show quite some time ago about uh, uh, Morbius on a Game Boy Advance cartridge, I believe, which that poor Game Boy Advance cartridge, I feel for it. <laughs> you know, sorry about that um but uh the um this quality was it was less than that but not that much less i mean it does have a right. little bit of like it feels like yars revenge meets movie <laughs> look to it you know which is things are a little a little broken up that way but you could absolutely see the movie i mean you don't have to um it's not like a scrambled channel you get it you know, you can kind of see what's going on. I was a little suspect, uh, or actually initially impressed to go, wow, not only can the Atari 2600 play movies, but it can colorize black and white movies because the movie they chose was Night of the Living Dead uh, that they, they'll include, uh, and we're going to include a link to all this stuff so you guys can check it out, where you can you can order this card uh, that will do this for you. And it what it includes is a uh, micro SD card slot where you put the actual movie which apparently it can play like two to four hours worth of video content. Um, and they chose to grab the pub public domain movie, which happened to be great choice, I think, uh, Night of the Living Dead. But my memory told me that was a black and white movie. And in the video where we watched it, it was in glorious color. And I was like, wow, that 2600 could do a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. It's like a Turner network. Why well, gave a whole new meaning to the whole black and white color switch? That, you know, <laughs> like wow, we can. I had no idea that they could colorize stuff, but it ended up being a colorized version. They did, but yeah, I was stunned. Uh, I thought it was really cool. It was also interesting. Like I said, we're going to include a link to it to see the process. Uh, we've recently talked about 
in television cartridges and uh, 78, 7800, Atari 7800 cartridges, um, which appear to be a little bit simpler to assemble. Uh, and so I got to see my first 2600 cartridge autopsy uh, and uh, started to see how, okay, I can see where that's not quite as straightforward. As yeah, that. um working on a, a game project right now, which will be released on physical cartridge. And uh, I saw this and I was just like, how is it? The 2600 is just so difficult to, to make, to do everything for. Um, even the programming seems more difficult than systems like Game Boy, which came after it. And then putting together the cartridge, I mean, we've seen, you know, different cartridges on the inside of them. It's essentially just a PCB slapped in a shell, whereas this has like a spring-loaded mechanism that <laughs> moves the PCB around. And why? Why is it so complicated? Yeah, I don't. And it's the base, you know, because if you play the Atari cartridge, you, you know, part of the base kind of retracts and and it's, I guess, protecting maybe the PCB connections a little bit when it's when it's pulled out by doing that. But, you know, the good thing about uh, this card, uh, this PCB board, is that if you want, if you don't want to deal with the hassle of actually putting it in an Atari case, with the spring and everything you need to do for it, uh, you can actually just stick the PCB in your 2600 and it'll work just fine. I, don't, I think it's gonna be cooler to have it be in a uh, type of thing. And as Mike mentioned, he's working he's working on a uh, cartridge game right now. I, I think, yeah, you may, you folks may in the future see some previous Bog Panda video content available as a 2600 cartridge. So I think that would be uh that would be pretty fun too so more on that later as well but this is really cool i thought and i had no idea uh it it could do it i mean we we gosh it was good. some time ago we did a show about the the uh add-ons to kind of upgrade or supercharge your 2600 so it could do a little bit more uh this leaves that in the dust <laughs> oh absolutely yeah i mean the, it's pretty amazing and i i love that there's people who know how to do way more stuff than I know how to do, who are still, you know, making these really cool advancements in these retro systems. Because, you know, we love playing these retro games, but it, it's cool to see it still move forward, but not, like, I don't even know what the right terminology for it would be. This sort of retro futurism <laughs> that's happening on these. Yeah, retro futurism. Yeah, I think that's, it that's it and it's super cool though i mean it is uh it is is really neat and so there's a uh we're going to include a link for you because i know everybody's going to want to rush out and buy one of these uh they make them in very small batches uh and so there's typically a wait list to do it and we're going to give you a link to get to that wait list i'll just let you know right now i'm ahead of you because <laughs> i'm in there so but am you're, I. <laughs> you're welcome, you're welcome. You're welcome uh, to uh, get in line behind Mike and I, and you know we'll do that. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty excited about that. Almost as excited as I am when I hear the latest Hard No, the world's shortest podcast, which is also available on this channel. Check out the Hard No playlist. It's free with your free subscription, so subscribe. There you go. Anything else to add, sir? uh not anything else except i'm waiting for the laser disc Atari 2600 player <laughs> that'll, be, <laughs> that'll be fun I hate these people. Whatever happens to them, happens to them. This song is for someone who definitely shouldn't choose. A name as silly and untrue as Dr. Mike. As everyone knows, buying a doctor's office isn't the same. You're not a real doctor. You're just pretty lame. So the song is too free for that. Certain someone to stop lying too much and to tell the truth for once, and maybe Bob Panda will 
suddenly rise in vain when you've dropped that lying habit and that silly name. It's my duty to tell you what to do Be better, be better Please be better So now Dr. Mike I hope you learn not to be so bad And don't forget to never doubt Kelly That she's sad You know he never even think of punching Chuck Eric And thinking that he would Just makes you pretty sick